Hey guys, my name is PK and here I have Ashish Malhotra with me who is a client or was a client of the Property Investment Accelerator and he's actually gone on to become a buyer's agent. He's bought more than a hundred properties for his clients. So like you might be wondering why is PK having a buyer's agent on his YouTube channel? I know like even I was like what? But seriously like I just want to bring value and Ashish is a super nice person. He's also very successful in his own portfolio and now portfolio of his clients. So hopefully this brings you a ton of value and thank you Ashish for for making time. No worries PK, the pleasure is all mine and yes it's always good to support um, and actually appreciate the work where I have gained value from as well. So definitely I'm more than happy to be on the call. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, let, let, let's get into it. We're going to discuss, you know, why you should invest in property with all the headaches it comes with. We're going to talk about your biggest learnings. We're going to talk about the sort of mindset, whether it's right time to buy now or whether you should wait. You know, what's the best way for property investors to get started and how to actually build confidence? These are the topics we're going to talk about. So, guys, if you're interested, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, you know, stick around. This is kind of the content you don't really hear um, much around the traps. Ashish, first first question, like I know there's a lot of conjecture, especially like in the Indian community. I hear it all the time, Western Sydney, Western Melbourne. They're like, I know the stock market. Uh, property, you know, there's repairs, there's maintenance, there's getting a bank loan, this and that. I just want to stick to the the stock market. Like, why did you get into property or how do you think about the additional headache, quote unquote, that comes with property investing? Look, initially when I was searching for my first one and Sydney, I realized back in 2015 was not the place for me a low income earner, I mean, above average, but still a single income earner, low income earning. Um, I couldn't have the courage of spending even 650 at that time uh, where people are buying in the ponds um, uh, for their owner occupier. And I thought, okay, that's, that might not be the, my strategy. So that's where I bumped into an investor come mentor. And I, I took some paid support initially uh, when I started and I realized property is an investment vehicle where you can leverage and if i take an example in numbers say you've got 20 dollars and you take 80 dollars leverage and you buy a hundred dollar property um a five percent return on that hundred dollars is five dollars but on your cash invested it becomes about 25 percent return um i don't think you're doing any better than that and that's why i keep conservative figures buying growing areas, keep demographics as your primary uh, concern along with supply. And I don't think one can go wrong. That's one. Second, looking in the hindsight, what I've achieved in last eight years, I don't think I could have ever achieved by being anywhere else or following any other investment vehicle. Um, that, that's pretty much all my reasons. But initially when I was investing, I was a big believer in property back in no, I belong to northern parts of India and uh, I've been a property enthusiast, car enthusiast and you name it. I'm more like a DIY freak sort of person and um, that's why I've spent a lot on my education. So I bumped into an investor. I paid him, yes, but I've got a lot of education from him. And then I bumped into your course as well. And that's why I feel no education is bad if you have time for it. But you need to have time for it. With young families, busy professionals, it just becomes sometimes a bit more than you can chew um but yeah that's that's what my journey has been and um, very quickly i felt property is the best investment vehicle if you can take the right decisions sure sure and maybe just on that point i didn't ask you and i genuinely don't know are you are you comfortable sharing like you know you've said you've said you've achieved a lot in the last eight years what's kind of like your <clears throat> property portfolio value right now what's your lvr how much income are you making you know it kind of just hits home if, if you're able to share some of these numbers oh so i'm like an open book i've got my portfolio displayed <clears throat> on different blo blogs as well um yeah so um, I started buying in 15, my second one in 16, I bought two in 17, uh, one in 19, one in 20, and one in 2021. 
I'm still hungry, property hungry. Um, I'm looking to expedite my super from here. So I'm just taking some advice from a professional consultant there. Um, but until February, so I'll I'll talk in two phases. Until February this year, I had um, five properties, um, four properties fully rented. And I was getting about $30,000 positive from there. So coming till now, I have seven, but I've sold two. I've stepped back because I've ventured into a commercial uh, 2022 warehouse subdivision development in Central Coast in Sydney. And that's that's the first development and commercial venture because I have a decent cash flow. So that's why I sold two properties. Now, until February was seven property, $4.8 million with a 50% LVR. And I don't, I've, I've hardly paid for my properties because the way I've followed, you buy add value in one way or the other. And that's where you're, um, if you even start with 90% LVR, it suddenly drops to 70%. Um, you add about 10, 15% value. So to this point, I'm back at 3.5, 3.6 million dollars with again 50% LVR approximately. I've got a good cash so I can venture into further developments. And now I'm trying to expedite my super development. So yeah, once you get property hungry, you're really property hungry. Yeah. So, but, I, but all of this comes for my goals. I think the way you consolidate the data really helps people. Um, and that's where I people don't know why they're buying, what they're buying, what they're trying to achieve. And that's why you need to have goals and income in mind. So you're not just too much hungry and you know where to stop. So that's that's where that's what my portfolio is and how why I've been building that. Yeah. I mean the, everyone's got an opinion on property and property investing, but it's I just think that there's so much gravitas and hearing opinion, even though it is opinion, from someone who's actually in the game and you know is is kind of putting their money with their mouth is a bit a bit like you. So at, at your peak, you were close to that sort of five million mark and you've also um, subsequently bought, I think, more than 100 properties for, for clients, like both from your own experience and client purchases. I know it's hard, but like, what's like your biggest learning? Like if there was something from your side of the bank of the river and, you know, there's like a brand new investor and you be on the other bank of, on the other side of the bank of the river, like what's one piece of advice that you can kind of shout over the river to say, do this to be able to swim across in the most efficient manner? So I think it's good to assess one situation. So I've just actually was talking to someone and uh, to, to um, conversation with two people and one said, I want to buy a property worth a million. And the other said, I'll split it into three properties worth 300K each. So I think one thing that I've learned is you need to know what you're doing. Not necessarily the same strategy goes for everyone. Um, number two is you should, you should, I think keeping demographics in mind, I would say is the biggest of my learning so far. These areas, usually I've seen the first to go up and last to go down as opposed to some rough areas. So yes, when people see the areas, they sometimes don't assess why someone's been avoiding those areas. The gentrification that's happening on the ground, um, that gets missed sometimes. So most most people that I talk to, they've bought cheaper properties for the sake of buying cheap. Um, to my understanding, a, a five a three hundred k property versus a five hundred k versus an eight hundred k. If your situation allows, um, are all good. Uh, one need need not drop value just for the sake of buying cheap. So five six hundred k is what my average is. But then when I grow in my journey, I know I'm not buying three hundred four hundred k anymore. I'd be buying seven eight hundred k. So it depends upon what sort of time people people have to manage those assets and. So my expertise has gone into more like consulting and understanding someone's situation and then giving them pros and cons and letting them decide what they are trying to do. Yeah. Um. Because it's not my call anyways, but I think one should be aware what they're doing and why they're doing. So that's the biggest yeah. um learning I, I, I've taken and I've, I give back as well. What they're doing and why they're doing it. Don't just follow what someone else is saying, even if it's me or Ashish. Understand for yourself 
why you're doing and what you're doing. And I really like that point. I don't want to pick on anyone or, or, or any suburbs, but let me just mention one. Like right now, <laughs> Elizabeth in the north side of Adelaide, you know, it's kind of classic example, really high yields, you know, six, 7% yields, properties under 400K, there's so many people rushing there. But the point that you made around demographics, Ashish, like you just can't, you, you can't just rush in and buy on yield alone. You need to understand what's happening. Sometimes it's okay to buy in 300K areas, but a lot of the time it's it's not. Um, the great, great point. Um, and what's your take? I mean, everyone knows my take. It's always a good time to buy property, but I'm heavily biased. I make money when people buy property, right? Um, but what's your take on is this a good time to buy Right now, interest rates are rising. Um, consumer sentiment is down. On the flip side, we're at full employment. Um, wages are rising. Like it's so hard for fee- people to figure out. And you know, they listen to colleagues, family, friends. And if they're in the wrong circles, they get wrong advice. Um, but like, what's your take on it? Um, yes, I fully agree on one that you. Take advice from someone who's done what you're trying to do. Um, second, you buy property when you're ready. And this is where your cumulative growth kicks in. A 5% growth today is much more beneficial 15 years down the line. And yes, assess where you're trying to invest and how much money you're trying to invest. Half a million dollars is or 400K is what, is what you're trying to invest and sitting on the sidelines thinking our market will go down in value, I don't think they, they're taking a sound decision. Um, even seven, 800K, uh, there are properties out there where you can achieve four and a half percent yield on quality investments. Um, I don't think one can go wrong there again. So my take is you buy when you're ready. Um, yes, either you educate yourself or you listen to someone who knows their stuff. But don't listen to friends and family. When I started, my first property was seventy five. So my another another biggest takeaway of of mine, I'll say you can say my I've got notions too. So I'm no different to maybe others. But I can't convince myself to buy regionals. And when I say regionals, I'm happy to buy something around a commutable distance to an employment precinct like CBD, or as you've said, um, activity precincts like beaches. I love beaches. Um. <laughs> So my first property was 75 kilometers outside and you won't believe it's so um, it's a 232 square meter block, a three by two bath single garage, a 14 square home. Uh, but my pri- price point was 280 and um, seven years fast forward, it's now 600K plus. Um, the crux was demographic and my friends were swearing at me saying, oh, you should be buying near to the station and this and that and CBD. But what I've, the again, Melbourne middle ring suburbs do not give you enough yield as compared to Melbourne outer ring suburbs. And that's why when you add another component called lifestyle, you're making money there. So find good areas, tightly held pockets. You can make money every time. Since 2017, there has been one event or the other. So someone is sitting on the sideline since 2018. I was talking to them and he said, "This it's still not a good time. I helped them buy two properties. They've got more than half a million dollars in equity um, on a purchase price of about seven, 800 only, right? So portfolio is almost doubling in value, nearly. Um, and I've asked them, why have you been waiting since 2018 when you've got such good growth in just two or three years? They started in 2017 and I think 2020, 2019 is when they stopped. So it said, I'm just waiting and waiting because 2019, there was a drop in two quarters and they got hesitant. 2020, COVID started and they got hesitant. 2021, um, again, COVID was going on. They were all bad news because media, um, they sell bad news, right? That's why people are get attracted. If everything's rosy, no one looks at it. So, and now it's interest rate. So there's always going to be one event or the other. If we keep waiting, we keep waiting. Um, it's just to get into the right areas at the right time and just jump in and enjoy the ride and just make sure you're spending time in the market rather than timing the market. Great advice. And even if we go back to like, let's say when I started around 2010, 2011, we were just coming out of the GFC, but anyone who knows 
they know that we weren't like in a rosy picture. Europe was basically collapsing. I think Greece and Italy were going bankrupt. It was a very shaky time. I was in investment banking and M&A activities were at all time low. And in fact, interest rates started dropping then in 2013. Why do interest rates drop? Because the economy is poor, right? And then Sydney started to go up because of it. One, one reason was interest rates. And people were saying, oh, Sydney's going up, you know, it's gone up 10%. Now it's about to crash. Like that sounds preposterous to us now because we know what Sydney's done. But, and then, you know, 2016, APRA started intervening, 17, Sydney, Melbourne started going down. People were saying, don't buy. Meanwhile, Ballarat, Bendigo are booming like anything. Hobart's going up like anything. And then I remember 2018, 19, where we started just sort of buying in places like Adelaide. It's like, why would you ever buy in Adelaide? That thing never moved. You know, last 10 years done nothing. Rest is history. So, I mean, gr great advice. There's always a reason not to buy, but there's always a reason why you should buy. You just need to, you just need to be educated. And probably that's the last question that I'll ask you, Ashish. You know, obviously you're, you're very experienced now. Like eight years is is not nothing. Um, there's kind of this divide. I still feel there's this divide between people like you and me telling people that time in the market, not simply timing the market, buy property, this and that. They hear that, but there's still this gap between hearing that and taking action. It's like their mind still, monkey mind still tricks them into saying, well, my friend's going to laugh at me, but like they did for you, um, you know, for making the wrong move. I'm going to be the joke of society, my community, my wife is going to kill me. You know, I, I presented the business case is going to have a negative ROI. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's a bit of a gap. How do people... How do people kind of take that leap of faith almost? What's the catalyst to be able to allow them to do that? Look, things are changing. So my take always is if either you spend on someone who's doing it for you or you spend on yourself and do it yourself. And if you can't find time, I have I know we've got busy families, we've got our routines and I've seen people who prefer lifestyle over anything. That's where things are changing. Um, but if you have to make a decision, you'll only be able to make a decision when you are informed. Um, and don't get me wrong, last eight years, everyone has bought one or two properties and everyone's properties have gone up in value by 80 to 100%. But was that enough? Do, did they have, um, did they had a goal in mind which they're trying to achieve? So you don't know what you don't know. And you will not know until you talk to someone who knows, right? Um, so sit with someone, spend time to understand what they can teach you. Uh, my, my goal is when people sit with me on a strategy call, that one hour, I help them understand their goals, um, the mindset. And if they have certain notions, I can add recommendations. But And then at the end of the day, it's on them. They, they are one step ahead as to where they were before the call. From there on, and I tell them, if you feel the service is aligned to what you're trying to achieve, yes, we go along together. If no, please go and educate yourself and then at least make a decision. But then when I follow up three, four months down the line, um, I hear, oh no, I've been finding, but I've not been able to find. And that's where everyone needs to add their value per hour. Um, if you don't know your value, you're wasting your value. Um, lastly, yes, I've heard from my clients when I ask them to add testimonials, um, same as you. So they tell me, sorry, I can't do that because my friends, when I talk about a buyer's agent, they say, oh, you can do it yourself. <laughs> and then I simply ask, do you think you've seen a difference? And they say, yes. And I think that's enough. And that difference can be made by an educator, by a mentor, or by whoever is in the industry. So yes, um, that's where one needs to understand what their strategy is. Um, most people don't know where they're going, why they're going, or what they're doing. And that's what leads them to be in trouble. Um, most people in Melbourne will talk about Wyndham and Melton. And yes, if you're buying an owner-occupier, I don't disagree. Um, it's one of the most reasonable areas out there. Most of the packages are sold there. 
and then if you want to make money the areas the other areas that one can consider so there's just a lot to consider in yeah the process. yeah no well put and and one thing that i'll just kind of pick out what i just want to highlight is to talk to someone who's done it right and you know one of the ways in which i do it is just like literally 400 free youtube videos you almost have like a brain dump from me and for what i'm worth i've done something and and then there are folks like you i think your business is called oswide buyers agent but like before paying for any service you should speak with someone who has actually achieved what you have achieved right that is the way to determine whether you should take the next step or not don't just make up your own mind in your room or at your house saying i don't want to invest in property because what the media is saying equally don't make up your mind to say i want to buy in this suburb because that's what my friend said right you need to actually speak with someone and there's plenty of free mentors that you know you had a mentor back when you started i had a few informal mentors which were just free of cost but they had achieved what i had wanted to achieve so i think that's that's the most important thing um no that that's fantastic thank you so much ashish for your time i i really appreciate it and guys seek out people like ashish like even if you don't want to use a buyer's agent people know my view on it i want to i won't say it again and again you don't need a buyer's agent but if you don't even have any time like not even any time like 3 4 5 hours a week then you know it's better than nothing and people like ashish are top of the crop um cream of the crop i should say i've got more than 75 buyers agents that we've trained up in in my course and hand on heart like even though i'm not anti buyers agents but i think that a lot of people don't need them finding a good buyers agent has a return on investment and people like ashish are, are just that um of course do it yourself first <laughs> if you have time a bit of passion you don't need a buyers agent but i'm just trying to to tell you guys the truth um thank you again ashish for your time yes take no worries thank you for having me all right thanks so much everyone take care bye take care everyone bye bye